our seas are set to become the power plants of the future. To ensure a successful energy transition, the large-scale development of offshore wind production will be key. The more infrastructure we build, the more interaction there will be with life both on the surface of and below water. Until now, we have mostly focused on measures we can take after our infrastructure has been built. Our attention is now shifting. To ensure our infrastructure is constructed in a manner that promotes a positive influence on marine ecosystems from the start, we have been collaborating with nature conservation experts from public and private organisations, universities, consultancies and non-governmental organisations. This approach is called Nature Inclusive Design. The Princess Elizabeth Island is our flagship project. Situated 45 kilometers off the Belgian coast, this artificial energy hub will include connections to offshore wind farms and serve as a landing point for additional interconnectors with the UK and Denmark. What does nature-inclusive design mean in practice? Let's start by looking at how it will be implemented above water. The island itself will be surrounded by a flood wall onto which small ledges will be built. These will attract black-legged kittiwakes. This fragile species of seagull lives and predominantly breeds on coasts with rocky cliffs. Tough man-made structures such as ledges can also be used by them. Beneath the wall's bull nose, three horizontal structures spaced half a metre apart will create 2.6 kilometres of breeding habitat. Along with nature experts, we will closely monitor the population's evolution. Below water, we will create an artificial reef in which marine life will be encouraged to flourish. According to nature experts, ecosystem approaches are best. Different ecosystem components must be encouraged to interact as much as possible, creating additional benefits. In a first phase, the measures we take will be grouped around the four corners of the island to get optimal results. How will this be implemented? A diverse and complex scour protection system will be installed around the island. Fine gravel beds will reinforce the island's corners. Larger loose stones like boulders will be placed on top of these beds. The more diverse the habitat, the richer the life will be that settles there. Additional structures will be installed to serve as an oyster larvae source. These larvae can then settle within this meticulously designed habitat, kick-starting the formation of a biogenic oyster reef. Finally, we will also implement measures to give the smooth walls of the island's foundations a more irregular structure. Relief panels will be attached to the lower parts of the walls. These will appeal both to small organisms including crustaceans, larvae and invertebrates, searching for solid surfaces to attach themselves to, and to small fish, seeking shelter and places to forage in. The artificial reef and associated measures will further protect the island from erosion. That's a win-win. There is still much work to do, but the unique co-creation process that we have been undertaking with experts has already yielded several valuable lessons. The implementation of this approach and monitoring of the progress we make are opening up new possibilities for future projects. <laughs>